Parking or leaving the machine. Park out of traffic lanes. Park on level ground if possible. Do not park in deep mud or water, especially in freezing weather. Lower the forks. Never leave a machine unattended with the forks elevated. Set the parking brake. Turn off the engine. Block the wheels if the forklift is on an incline. So what we need to do is make sure we're attending that machine. We can get out of it, undo our seatbelt, set our parking brake, get out of the machine, go up there, rig our choker, adjust our forks, whatever we got to do. But we don't walk off and leave that machine unattended. If we need to, back up, park it, put the forks on the ground, turn it off. That's what we need to do before you walk off and go get a chain or choker, whatever you got to do. All right, so make sure the machine is on the ground if it's unattended, all right? Now, if we're putting it up in a building with a trash box and we're setting it up on the building floor and it's just that far off the floor, I'm okay with that. Let's barricade the bottom so nobody walks underneath. We're loading the trash box. We're okay with that, but we're on the structure of the building if something goes wrong. And that's not the same as being unattended because we deliberately put it there in place and we flagged it off. The right? machine's not going to come down unless you drill holes in the cylinders. Okay, sometimes in our jobs we have places we don't want you to drive. Oh, what size forklift is this? Oh, it says right there. 5,000 pound, 34 foot reach. See, ta-da, is it that easy? You're smarter than you were before now. You know how big the forklift is. So this one actually drove back in this hole and broke through the ceiling. So there's places on our jobs that we say don't go there, we mean do not go there. It's very expensive. Forklift signals. This is what OSHA has in the forklift standard for signals. There's some confusion typically with this. A lot of guys know crane signals a little bit better than they know forklift signals, and I'm okay with that. What I really care about is that the person signaling the operator has the same understanding that the operator does. So you should talk about what your signals will be. What does this mean? Do you both know what that means? And what does this mean? For example, what does this mean to me? Money. Money. Yeah, money. You got it, right? What does this mean to me? Get off my job. So clearly, I'm not equipped to handle forklift signals, okay? So look at the chart. Crane signals work. The best thing is that the person guiding the operator and the operator have talked beforehand so you know what you're talking about, what signal moves what. And are you going to do it with gloves on? And as I said before, I prefer cell phones. Cell phones are great. You can stay back from the hazard. You can talk to the guy. He can be in there. He's usually parked using his hand, listening to you, and we can get it. It's a whole lot safer. Everyone has a cell phone. I'm okay with landing loads and picking loads up with people talking on the cell phone. Mirrors. The forklift should have a mirror on the far side. It needs to be clean and it needs to be kept adjusted so you can see. Does this nail matter? It depends. If it's a solid rubber tire or foam fill, it doesn't. Read your operator's manual on the machine you're operating so that you know what it matters. This training class I'm giving you now can tell you in general these things, but specifically before you go get in the machine and run it, pull the operator's manual out and understand the peculiarities of that machine. All right? Many forklifts are different from each other and general inspection guidelines may not be sufficient. You as the operator are responsible for understanding the machine you're running and check it out before you use it. That is your job. If you can't do that, do not operate it. Okay? If you're just going to jump in it and drive off, you're not a forklift operator. You're not following our program. You're not following the law. So take your time to do this correctly. The operator's manual instruct operators on proper inspection techniques and maintenance procedures. For example, SkyTrack with solid rubber tires, the rim wells tend to fail over time. So we need to inspect it. It's more than checking the oil. It's looking at stuff like that. That's part of that two-minute walk-around inspection. This grease leak, because it is hoisting equipment, is the kind of thing that is a red tag event. That forklift should not be in use with that grease leak. It can break in a vertical position, and then we have a new hazard. So we need to get that machine off the site and get one that is in good condition. Okay, safe operation. The operator is responsible for the safe condition and operation of the forklift. 
Bradbury Stam construction forklift training must be completed before operations. Forklift training is general in nature. Operators must become familiar with each machine's capacities and limits. Never operate a forklift from anywhere other than the operator's seat. Never allow riders on the forks or the frames, etc. Use grab rails when mounting and dismounting the machine. Don't grab levers or the steering wheel to pull yourself up. Never reach through potential pinch points. The exception to this is man baskets. We are allowed to use a man basket attached to a forklift. Here's a few of the things you have to do with that. One, the operator must stay in the seat the entire time mirror in the man basket. Two, we do not drive the forklift around with men in the man basket. You drive the forklift to where it's going to go, they get in the basket, you have harnesses and lanyards, they tie off to the correct anchorage points. You can lift and position them in place, boom in, boom out, okay, tilt a little bit, what do you got to do? Follow their instructions because they're the ones that have to work safely up there. And then if you need to move, come back down, they get out, then you can back up and move, they get back in. That's what you have to do. No riding around, because that's where people get thrown out of the guardrails, banged into them, and injuries. If you have sheeting and things like that in that plywood, whatever, drywall, and you have it in the forklift, and you have it in the basket, make sure that the workers stay to each side of it, so a shift in that load won't pinch them. Also, tie it to the rail so it can't flop, because if the operator tips the basket, it's all going to crash forward. And if your hand or your leg or something is between there where it's going to hit that front rail, it's going to smash you. All right? You can tie it to the front rail if you want, but make sure it is secure. Secure the load. No matter how long it takes, you need to secure the load that's in the basket with you each time. Okay? Beware of loose clothing and long hair around moving and rotating parts, fans, pulleys, belts, and so forth. Keep all body parts inside the operator's compartment and wear your seat belt. Wear hard hat and pre to prevent injury from smaller objects penetrating the overhead protective structure. Eye protection is required for windy, dusty conditions or when placing loads overhead. Basically, beware of loose clothing and stuff. Keep body parts inside. Wear your seat belt. Wear your hard hat because we're picking stuff up. It's on the forks. It blows off. It falls at us. And our only protection is, oh no, I hope my hard hat works today. Ugh. So, let's do that. Same thing with eye protection. Always, when you're in a forklift. Those three things. And sometimes, you get people that think that uh, they should use their body to determine when the forklift's going to roll. I asked this guy why his leg was against the tire. He said, this forklift doesn't have a parking brake. So if it rolls, I'll feel it. And I said, if it rolls, you're going to feel it for a long, long time. So you might have get your picture. So do not put your body against a hard tire and a hard light pole. That's how people get crushed, okay? Something is wrong here. This forklift should not be on our job site. It needs to go into a shop for repair, okay? It's, it's an unsuitable piece of equipment for us. Use extreme caution when adjusting forks. Tilt forks forward to relieve the weight. Wear gloves and keep hands clear of pinch points and crushing points. Space forks at their maximum width that will safely lift the load. Be aware of soft ground, holes, overhead wires, bridges, pedestrians, and other vehicles. Feather the load when starting and stopping. Communicate. Voice, horns, backup alarms. If you're coming to a blind corner, stop. Sound the horn and then proceed slowly in case someone's coming around the other way. Right? And sometimes we have that. We don't have people out there guiding you. So we need to take our time with that. Stop and let them know you're coming that way. Be careful with your fingers adjusting the forks. All right? Don't have someone suddenly rush up and help you slide the forks and not roll your fingers back. I have workers' comp claims from people smashing their fingers. Unsecured items on a forklift. This is not acceptable. Go get a milk crate. Fill a box. Get a Home Depot bucket. Wire it on. Put this stuff in some sort of container. I don't care how it looks, I care that it doesn't fall off, get tangled up, and don't put anything in the cab with you. At Intel and Rio Rancho, New Mexico, we had a fatality because the workers put chokers over their body, got in the machine, fastened the seatbelt, but one of the legs of the nylon choker went underneath the tire, he drove forward, it pulled him in half. Don't put anything in the machine with you, 
in the seat. Nothing in here. Put it outside. I don't care if you hang a chain on the backrest. If you lose it, we'll buy another chain. But don't tear your body up. Okay? Refueling. Eliminate all ignition sources before refueling. Shut down the forklift. Make sure gas, cans, pumps, tanks are properly rated for fuel dispensing. Refuel in areas where spillage of the fuel can be easily contained or minimized. Refuel only in well-vented areas. Many of our job sites, we have by contract a refueling pad. And that's typically a sheet of plastic with a little bit of dirt over it. You must refuel there. Check with your superintendent because the owners of these properties do not want ground contamination if there's a problem. And we don't want a big digging, monitoring wells point. We want to be able to scoop up a little bit of dirt and a sheet of plastic and dispose of it properly. Okay, refuel outside. If they do catch on fire, if we do catch a forklift on fire, what do you think we should do about it? Call 911. Do not try to save yourself. If you have a fire extinguisher readily available and it's a tiny little thing, maybe try to put it out. But do not get hurt over it. Your employer does not want you to have a third degree burn where you can't work for the next two weeks because you tried to save a forklift that caught on fire. If these forklifts are sold and raggedy that they catch on fire, we shouldn't have them on our job site anyway. So don't save them. It's not like it's a little kid in a car seat and a car turned over an intersection. That's where you should be a hero, not with a double forklift. Same thing with generators, welding machines. That stuff catches on fire and equipment, get away from it. Get the professionals to come out. Anyone can call 911 on a Bradbury Stand job site. We have nothing to hide. We try to run it as compliant with the law as possible. We want everyone to know that they have a safety program. They're all part of the safety passport program. This is what we do to keep you out of trouble, to keep you going home safe at night. So you're all authorized. If we think we need firefighters or EMTs, call them. It's okay with us. We'll sort all that other stuff out later. But we do not want anybody injured and not get proper medical treatment. But the best way to avoid all that commotion is for you guys to follow the rules in the safety passport. Read it, take it seriously, pay attention to stuff we went on here, and we won't have accidents. Thank you.